Hello guys, I'm Frederick from Opet and welcome to Pretty In Noise. We played our first festival yesterday in, at the Rock King Park and today's the second so it just started basically. We've been, we got back from an American tour with Mastodon and Ghost for a couple of weeks ago. So now it's just kicking in. The weather sucks today but this is a nice festival. Now it's only like weekend warrior kind of thing. We play about 12 festivals this summer so it's, we have some time off. We've been doing a lot of shows since the end of September. I think we've done maybe 130 shows all over the world and then another US tour. So. <laughs> it's a lot, you need some time back home as well, you know, see if you have some family left or whatever. You have some kids or family back home? I have a son, yeah, a girlfriend. So, do you have any plans for after Opeth? Something like settling down and, I don't know, just being with your family or are you still going strong? Still going strong, I want to do this till, until the day I drop, you know. So, I haven't really made up any backup plans when Opeth is going to maybe, you know, quit, but as it looks now, we're not going to quit. Still have, um, I think we can still do interesting music in the future. We have something to offer still. How do decision processes take place in um, Open? Well, usually we have meetings, you know, if it's regarding some music or a set list, we meet up in Stockholm, have a sort of band meeting and bounce his ideas. Michael is the pilot of the band, but he always it's still a democracy. If he has any ideas and anybody else has any, we bring it up to the table and you know, everybody has their saying about that. So it's not a dictatorship? You know? No, it is not. But he can be very stubborn if he has an idea. But usually he has cool ideas, you know, so it's, uh, I guess nobody really said anything against him really because he has cool visions, Michael. You've been on the scene for quite a lot of time. It's not normal to be like in the business and be actively and uh, popular in the business for such a long time. And you've also seen a lot of bands come and go, I suppose. What do you think are the major reasons for band breakups? Well, I guess economics could be one thing. Uh, maybe bands get frustrated. They're, they're struggling and struggling. Doesn't get from point A to B, maybe that can break up a band. And of course you need to have good chemistry, it's very important, especially as much as we tour, we get along really good, it's kind of weird actually, we even go out and have a beer together when we're off tour back home. And that's of course very important if you want to maintain as a group. Most of our viewers are like around about between 18 and 27 I would say. And they are assembling their own bands right now. How do you decide who to pick for a band? Do you go for the best players? Do you go for someone who's also into the same style of music? How could you like do a nice picking process to have a sustainable band? I think it's of course it has to be a good person has to be good at what he does, his playing. And but it's also a matter of if you can be the chemistry, as I mentioned before, you know. I think it's about 50-50, you know. You can have someone that's ex extremely good, but he's an asshole, then you can't work with that, you know. It's gonna, it's gonna ruin the band. Yeah. So I think that's see? important. The, the, the chemistry and, of course, the musicality. I think, yeah, that's probably two ground things I would think of if I would pick anybody. And, of course, that you have the same kind of aim musically, but it's also good to find somebody that listens to some other stuff you never listened to, you know, we could broaden your sound or whatever. What kind of art do you enjoy these days on the tour bus? What kind of albums or DVDs, I don't know? Um, on the last tour we watched a lot of Will Ferrell easy comedy stuff, like Step Brothers, I think we watched it four times. It's Silly, funny movie, stuff like that. We we'll watch some horror movies, could be anything. I got some guitar instructional videos that I bought. Because you have so much off time when you're on tour, so you might as well try to get better on your instruments. Right? Apart from that, when we're 
late night when we have a few beers, we listen to mainly like old school metal stuff that we grew up with. Except you, Judas Priest, are made in Dio, Ozzy Osbourne, that kind of stuff, Black Sabbath. And last night we were listening to Bloodbath. Since, yeah. since uh, Sodomizer is here as well, helping us out with the guitars. Cool. Except it's actually from my hometown. Oh really? Sony, yeah. It's like one of the biggest German bands with creator in the metal business. Yeah. Basically those both are just the only known ones. Yeah, great. I bought the new album. It's cool. Yeah. I haven't heard it, to be honest. Like in Sounds my like hometown, they're more like considered as old people, you know? <laughs> Do you like newer hardcore stuff like La Dispute or Chariot? Or I don't I don't have I haven't heard those bands so I can I couldn't say anything. Sometimes I just don't keep track of all new bands, it's difficult, but I, today I watched a band, it was a hardcore band that was cool, but I can't remember their, their name. <laughs> Sorry. Um, one of my favorite bands in this whole psychedelic metal thing is Tool. Mm -hmm. Could you spontaneously name me one band that you think is better than Tool in your universe? Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, we are like two questions away from the end. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what kind of day jobs did you have before Opeth and what was the day job that you hated most? I had some pretty jobs, some pretty shitty jobs actually. I think the first job I worked for this company, they ran out people that need extra help. Like it could be anything from working in a warehouse or. But I got this shitty kind of thing, I was supposed to empty. The people put stomach bags and administration, those boxes at toilets. My job was to empty those in a big thing, press a button to push it together and I threw up the first day and just fuck off. You know, I couldn't How old do that. Were you? Sixteen. So but apart from that I had I used to tear down buildings after fires. I used to clean up after dead people. And um, I've been doing some construction work. A lot of different jobs. The last work I had before I became a professional musician was at the trucking company, giving trucking orders, driving orders to truckers, uh, delivers, you know, anything, basically. And that was good work because I could play guitar like four hours a day. So I could walk around and play guitars and do that. So that was good. So right now there is no need for additional day job? No. It's all music. It's been like that since, for me, since 2005 when I joined. Uh, at the time, I played with Arch Enemy for one and a half year, and after that, I joined Open. So, so that must be, you must be pretty proud of that step. Right? Yeah, it's, there was times the in the in the early 90s that I could live off the music as well. So I had my ups and downs, and it's also probably good for you to have those ups and downs. It may, I think, I appreciate what I got now more. Some people like they're just complaining that they don't know. How they could be flipping burgers, you know. You got to think about that sometimes. This whole transition from the rehearsal room to becoming a real professional musician who's being paid for the music. Do you have any tips for our audience? What to keep in mind in that phase, transitioning from that league to the next one, which is the well, think foremost complicated step in the whole game. I'd say. I think it's very important to find a good manager can take the band to the next level because of course you can do a lot of stuff yourself but it's better to have somebody else to talk for you to promote you then I find it difficult for talking promote myself you know I'm um, blah 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 you know. so that's I mean first you got to have the music down and all that you know but as soon as you feel you're ready you should try to get a good manager how does one know who a good manager is? Is a good manager a trustworthy person or someone who has got a Warner label or industry contacts? I guess you can look at what other bands have, the kind of managers they have. You know, you can look at their careers. Could be a good thing. Recommendations. Talk to other people about a certain person. Do you search for a manager or does the manager search for you? Well, when I joined Opeth, Andy was already the manager, so we, and he's great, you know, he, he definitely took the band to the next level. When uh, they signed with him was during the Blackwater Park album, and that was when the band started touring heavily, and 
and stuff started to happen you know, in a bigger way. So he's great. He has many different ideas about everything. So we're up to the final question. Um, all of our viewers mostly are in this gap which we are talking about right now. Do you have any words of hope or encouragement for young musicians in the rehearsal rooms who are not, just not getting it done properly? Just follow your dream and do what you want to do, I think. And um, work hard, practice a lot and stay focused. Some good news or... Yeah.